Welcome to your first content video. This is your first video on the Renaissance and we'll be learning about characteristics of Renaissance art. So on your right side of the notebook, I'm going to give you a copy of the PowerPoint. If you want to print out your own and put it there, that's okay. Feel free to take notes if you feel like. The left side, on your own, you're going to Google two paintings. Write the names of these paintings. One painting has to be either a Da Vinci painting or a Michelangelo painting. Now what you're going to do is, after you watch the video, identify which of the seven characteristics you learned about are represented in that painting. The other painting you want to look is going to be a Northern Renaissance artist, either Albrecht Dürer or Jan van Eyck. So look up those. You'll find plenty of paintings on each. Just pick two and explain the characteristics. And we're going to learn about the characteristics right now. Okay, now you'll see throughout the year, most of these videos are based on PowerPoints that I made with my stick figures and my lovely little creations. This is not a PowerPoint I created, but it covers the material well, so we're going to use it. So we're going to learn about Renaissance art. Now to learn about Renaissance art, you have to know about patronage. And that's that people were willing to spend money on artists, whether it be private investors or the church or public, like the government of Florence, let's say. And Art is very important because it was like a competition. Um, it was used for social and political status. So we're going to learn about seven characteristics that are traditional of Renaissance art that you might not see in, let's say, modern art or Impressionist art, but you'll see a lot in Renaissance art. So the first characteristic is realism and expression. Unlike medieval art that looked, seemed sort of flat and emotionless, this artwork showed people's feelings and emotions. Masaccio was a very early Renaissance artist, and he really wanted to represent the subject matter truthfully and precise and detailed. So that meant being realistic, and that meant showing people's emotions. The second characteristic is perspective. You may have learned about this in art class in the past, where you had to make a vanishing point, like a road that went off into a distance. The way to make art seem real was to make it seem three-dimensional. Um, Masaccio was also the first Renaissance artist to really um, develop this. And to do this perspective, to make this seem 3D, it actually meant that the artist studied a lot of mathematics and geometry in order to make, you know, what's in the front seem in the front. And you see here some examples of how they used perspective. You see a lot of perspective in Raphael paintings and other artwork that we'll see in class and in other videos. So, you know, if you've done this in maybe a middle school art class, you've already um, learned a little bit about Renaissance characteristics. The third one is classicism. We're going to turn a, talk a lot about humanism in this unit. So classicism is the idea that the Renaissance was a rebirth. It went and embraced certain characteristics of ancient Greek and ancient Rome. That meant that much of the art was secular meaning wasn't religious, even though there was many religious paintings in the Renaissance. Humanism, that focus on humans reaching their full potential and that they could make realistic art and that the human was important, which is what um, relates to individualism, right? Making one individual in a statue or a painting. So that, therefore, is the fourth one. And I see the emphasis is spelt wrong there, but I wasn't able to edit it. So the idea that portraits, that the individual is so important that they weren't um, a portrait is actually a, a Renaissance idea. You know that wasn't common. Um, the individual is so important that this portrait means they would almost live forever because there was no photography back then, right? And usually only the wealthy or politically um, powerful could afford to have these portraits done. So this showed you know the potential of man and what they can do and what an individual could accomplish. This is not a characteristic. This is just a slide about an example of a patron. Um, during the Renaissance, a wealthy woman, Isabella, there. The fifth characteristic is geometrical arrangement of figures. This is a da Vinci painting. And they used, you know, the structure was very important. And you see in a lot of their paintings um, examples of geometry. Um, the Madonna here looks almost like a triangle, the way her body is shaped. Or look at the triangular mountains in the background. Sixth, light and shadowing and softening. Chiascuro is the contrast. You have the very bright um, features on her, on her forehead, for example, and the dark features in the background. Sfumato is that softening of the edges, that 
it almost the lines almost evaporate. There's no hard, clean lines. It's it's smoky. Um, no exact borders. So that's also common in Renaissance art. That's another uh, Da Vinci painting. The seventh isn't really a characteristic of the art itself, but of the times. You know, there were no Kardashians or celebrities back then. The artists were their celebrities, um, and people really wanted to sort of claim celebrities. Like Da Vinci, he ended up living with the royal family in France, right? And they were very proud of that. So the next video, we're going to be talking about Renaissance Florence and the banking system there and the Medici family and architecture and all sorts of cool stuff like that. So once again, your left side, you're looking at two paintings um, and you're going to say what characteristics you found in there. If I ask you for a password, the password word is going to be flag. I don't know why. Sounds good. All right. See you next class.